In this video, we're going to actually start our series on creating a multiplayer ready door. So what I mean by multiplayer ready is obviously when player one opens the door, player two will see it as a, we'll see it open as well. And same thing goes, we will work on keeping the states using an on rep variable. So that way it stays in sync even if a player leaves the server and comes back or joins in late after the door has been interacted with. So that way it stays in sync against, well, pretty much with every single client that's going to be around to see the door. So to begin, we're just going to work on creating our interaction function and our door class. So we're going to start with the door class first and just get that for the most part set up. Then we're going to work on getting our line trace going so we can interact with the door. Then we're going to create inside of Blender a actual door mesh, the armature, and create a simple opening and closing animation for it and set those up to play in our door class. So this is going to be spread over the course of a few videos, but it should be relatively simple. So to begin, all this is is the default third person project it is the C++ version, because obviously all my tutorials for the most part are in C++. So we go to our C++ classes, door tutorial. We're going to right click and create a new class. We're going to create an actor. And we're just going to give the name of door. So I'm going to go ahead and make this public. So that way we have it split into two separate folders just to keep everything a little bit neater and hit create class. Now give that a minute and wait for it to reload inside of your IDE. Okay, now I have my private and public folders with my door inside. So let's go ahead and get that set up. So we go to our door h and door.cpp. We can go ahead and open our door.cpp and we have to fix the include directory. Well, as it actually shows right here. So basically what it is going to be is all we have to do is just do door tutorial public door.h and that'll set it up to uh, find the correct actual header next up we want to disable tick so we're going to set b can ever tick to false and just completely remove the tick function like so and we want to add a couple things we know the door needs a mesh so we're going to have to add a skeletal mesh because we're going to be playing an animation on it as well as we're going to need a function to toggle the door. To start, we're going to go ahead and create the mesh. So let's actually do that. I always like creating separate sections for it. We know it's not the great pra best practice, but eh, I'll just remove that. All right, so we're going to do view property, edit defaults. Well, actually, let's do edit anywhere, so that way we can change it to any door we want later in the future. And we're going to do category equals tutorial now you can ignore the category that's just for my own sake if i need to find it quicker and we're going to use a use skeletal mesh component which is going to contain our skeletal mesh so it's going to have the armature you know the bones and stuff already so that way we can play an animation so we're going to before declare it so class use skeletal mesh component and it's a pointer and let's call it uh, let's just do door mesh copy that Head over to our .cpp and go to the constructor. We're going to do door mesh equals create default sub object u skeletal mesh component. And we're going to give it the name of text skeletal mesh component. Now we just have to include your skeletal mesh component. So that way we can call functions on it. So include components skeletal mesh component.h. So for the most part, we're actually fairly decently set up. We want to set the root component to be equal to the door mesh. So that way the door mesh itself is actually the root component of the door. So we have that situated. Uh, let's go ahead and create the public function to toggle the door. So that's just going to be void toggle door. Simple as that. Create the implementation. And we're good there. Now we want to have our opening and closing animation. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the U property. It's going to be class U. Actually, I think it's just U. Is it? Okay, it's U animation asset. Open animation. I'm going to go ahead and forward declare it again. Well, actually, better yet, because we're going to be using two of these, let's forward declare it outside the class. So class U animation asset.
Now we can come down here, copy this whole thing again, and do it again, but for closed animation. Or closed animation, not closed. Like that. So that'll allow us to have our door mesh and play the corresponding animations on it. So when we toggle door, that's pretty much what we're going to do. So we need a way to control the door state. So if the door is open, we close it. If it's closed, we open it. So we're going to have a boolean here. So bool b door open. Let's set that in the constructor to be false by default. We're going to have our simple check here. So if b door open, that means the door is open. So we're going to do b door open equals false. And then we want to close the door. So we're going to play the close animation. So if close animation, we're going to do door mesh play animation close. Why keeps auto filling like that? Close animation. And the second parameter is if we want it to loop, which we don't. So we're going to set it to false. Okay, and for some odd reason that just opened it up in Notepad. So we're just going to pass in false. Now we do the exact same thing. Or better yet, let's just copy this line right here. Perform an else. And paste the line down. So we're going to change this to B door open equals the opposite of B door open. So it just toggles it. So if it's true, it'll set it to false. If it's false, it'll set it to true and keep going like that. So in our else, we're going to do if open animation door mesh play animation open animation and again false. So when we call toggle door, we check. So if the door is open, we play the closing animation and then we set it to false. If the door is not open, this is going to fail, so it's going to run the else. Then it's going to play the open animation because the door is closed. And then we're going to set the B door open to equal true. So it's now the state of the door is open. So that's all that's going to really happen in here. And we are going to set this up so it works in multiplayer, but that will be done once we confirm that it works inside of single player, which means we need to have a mesh, which also means we need to have animations for said mesh to play. So in the next video, we're going to work about creating that and setting that up. But for right now, I just want to make sure that I can actually interact with this door. So I want to go ahead and give a compile. Let me close down the editor real quick. So go ahead and compile and relaunch the editor. I'm going to make sure to disable that plugin. I'm going to do that really quickly just so it quits popping up. Okay, so we have our door. Here's our door class. We're going to right click, create a blueprint version. And let's go ahead and actually create a new folder in our content browser called door. We're going to put it inside of door. So let's name this BP underscore my door, or, or sorry, BP door, because that's our blueprint version of our door. So it, the parent, as you can see, is, let's see, does it show it? Our class is the door tutorial dot door. So it's our C class. So now all we want to do is we want to go ahead and set the skeletal mesh. We'll set it to just the mannequin. So that way there's, you know, at least something there to interact with, to uh, test it with, anyways. And let's scroll down for collision. It's currently set to no collision. Let's just set it to block all. So that way everything's going to hit it our line trace and everything. We place it down right here. We can confirm that by walking into it, and it stops us. So we're good to go there. Now we just have our open and our close animation, which we actually need to create. But to confirm that we can interact with this door, we will have to create our line trace. So that's what we're going to do in the next video, where we simply create a line trace function. So when we press E, we want to walk up to the guy right here, press E. If our line trace hits the door class, then we will open the door. And we're actually going to create a interactable component, or sorry, interactable interface to handle this for us. So we're going to do that when we actually go to clean it up. So, because that's how I'm starting to do things instead of just constantly casting. Anyhow, that is going to actually be it for this video. I'm going to do a quick little rundown of what's going to happen.
that I was starting here, we have our skeletal mesh. That is the current, well, currently, that is the mannequin. We have our open and close animations. So that's going to be the corresponding animations that we create in Blender. So if the door is closed, we play the open animation. If it's open, we play the closed animation. And then we have our simple control boolean. So that's going to be dictating what the state is. So if the door is open, we want to close it. If it's closed, we want to open it, that kind of thing. So when we call toggle door, we put all these together. So we check the door state, play the corresponding animation, and set the door the new door state after it's played the animation. So that's really all there is to it. It is quite simple. Uh, currently, it is not replicated. But like I said, that'll be done in a future video because I want to kind of keep these at the uh, roughly 10 to 15 minute and under mark. So I will see you in the next video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description where I have a Team Deathmatch series dedicated just to my Patreons. If you have any questions or anything like that, you can find a link to my Discord server down below as well, and I'll try to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.